I hope some of you read Psalms 91 this week. So let's take a quick look at it. Psalms 91, and we're going to look at verse number five. You will not fear. Fear is not part of your heritage. In the kingdom of God, now you were raised in the kingdom of fear, but when you were born again, you came into a new kingdom. You have been given authority. Fear is not part of your life. The Bible says fear is torment, and fear is an enemy of yours. That's an indicator. I tell people, if you're anxious, you're not in faith. You'll make dumb decisions when you're fearful. You'll go into survival mode when you're fearful. You'll not take territory when you're fearful, right? But see, you're not fearful. You've been, you're, the Bible says you're to be bold as a lion. You're to know who you are and what you're called to do, when to do it, and where to do it. And when God says that, you already have the victory. You're not to live a life full of fear. You say, well, pastor, how do I, I am fearful. What do I do? Well, you need to back up and talk to yourself like an attorney in a courtroom. Get the word of God out and argue your, speak to yourself like an attorney arguing God's case. Until you're, you're, you settle down and get in faith, you don't advance, don't make decisions, you stop. You're not going anywhere anyway. You're not going anywhere anyway. Right? So it says, you're not to be afraid. Verse 5, by the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand on your right hand, but it will not come near you. You'll only observe it with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the, the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come to your house. For he will command his angels concerning to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion, the cobra, uh, the great lion, and the serpent. Because he loves me, says God, I, I will rescue him or her. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I'll answer him. I'll be with him in trouble. I'll deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Well, long life, I'll satisfy who? God satisfied? Well, it was his time to go. You ever heard that? This, God knew best. It was his time. Uh, excuse me, was he satisfied? Was, was she satisfied? According to this scripture, who picks that time? Who picks when it's time to go? The Bible says when you're satisfied. See, I believe when you run your race and you're satisfied, there's a knowing, hey, I'm, 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 I did it all. I'm, I'm good. I'm ready to go home. That's what I believe. You'll know that time. You'll know that season. You know, and it'll be a good season. It'll be, it'll be a great, you'll be expectant. You'll be looking to, to heaven. You'll be, you know, you've, you've, you've done it. You've, you, you know, I've accomplished it. That's what, that's what the word of God says. All right. Isaiah 26, 3 says, God will keep you in perfect peace. The person that stays in perfect peace is the person that keeps their mind on the word of God. The word of God is to be an anchor for your soul. Your emotions need to anchor themselves to the word. You need to quote the word to yourself. You need to anchor to what the word says. You need to answer situations. When situations arise, you need to have an answer for it with the word. It's your emotions that get out of whack. And they are subject to your will. Healing is yours. Matthew 15, 26 says, healing is the children's bread. Now, I'm sure you've grown up, you've had cereal. Basically, what Jesus is saying is healing's just as common as you asking for the cereal bowl. Act like you own it. My kids never said, please, thank you. They just said, hey, pass the cereal. This is the most, the most arrogant thing I ever saw. They, actually, they acted like they actually owned the cereal. Because they did, right? Because they did own it, right? Because they did. They're in my house. They're my kids. Anything I have in that house, except a few things, Tim, <laughs> are theirs, right? But cereal's on the list, man. That's on the list. That belongs to them. Anything they want. All the cereal they want, right? That's what healing is. All the benefits of the kingdom are legally yours. You don't have this begging and crying and screaming and carrying on and slobbering and all. Oh, God, please. Oh, God, please. You know, stop that stuff. That's nonsense. That's no prayer of faith. That's a begging mentality, an orphan mentality. 
You are a child of God. You have legal rights in the house. You are a citizen of his kingdom with legal rights. Everything, every promise has already been given to you. Stop begging for them and start saying thank you. I'll take that one. Thank you. Well, that's what, that's what Philippians 4, 6 says. Be anxious for nothing but in everything. Through prayer and supplication, let your requests be known to God with thanksgiving. And the peace of God shall guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Right? Just say thank you. I'll have that one. Thank you. Oh, I'll have that one too. Thank you. I'll have that promise. Thank you. Oh, long life. I'll take that one. I like that one. That's good. I like that. <laughs> Healing. I'll have that one. Healing's yours. You know, we have been trained by a lot of propaganda from the enemy. You have. You need to recognize it. Let the word of God sort it out for you. But one illness that people are fearful of, and you can list a list of names for diseases that cause fear in people's lives, but one is MS, multiple sclerosis. I'm quoting now out of the, uh, the dictionary uh, about this disease. It is a lifelong condition with symptoms such as fatigue, pain, bladder, bowel problems, sexual dysfunction, movement and coordination difficulties, vision and cognitive changes, emotional and mental health problems. A diagnosis of MS means that people may have to adapt to a new lifestyle. It is a chronic condition, which means it's long-lasting and there is no cure for it. There's no medication that can repair the damage already caused by MS. Uh, MS is an autoimmune disease in which the body attacks its own tissues. Uh, It it attacks the fatty substance that coats the nerve fibers. And we just read that once they're, they're damaged or destroyed, there's no cure for that. Well, we have another answer for that. And uh, we can take a look at Tracy's story right now. Um, I started getting some numbness in my toes. And um, I had gone to the doctor, to my family doctor. And, uh, and he, you know, he said he didn't know what it was. You know, he, I think he gave me some muscle relaxers or something. And it, it just kept progressing. So eventually he sent me for an MRI. And that's when they saw the spots on my brain. And at the time, I wasn't um, going to church, but I had been raised in church. When um, I first was diagnosed with it. It was um, just like in my toes and my feet and would kind of climb up my legs. I'd go back to the doctor and they do diagnose me with MS. Um, it started to progress and it had gotten so it, it was like up in my chest and it just feels like someone's squeezing you and, and you're numb. It's, it's like you're at the dentist office and, and they numb your mouth and, and you know when you're like that you can't stand it. You're just waiting for that to go away. It was like you had a stroke. It'd take away your fine, like, you know, trying to, you couldn't write. His brother was trying to tell us, hey, this is what's going to happen. You know, this is, you're going to be in a wheelchair. You you know, you need to get ready. Start looking for a house that you can get a wheelchair through the door. Yeah, so it impacted the family life. But um, uh, we tried to, I tried to basically block it out a lot. I was just like, this is not happening. And I came back and it was a friend I hadn't heard from her in a long time, but she called me. She said, Tracy, um, come to church with me. We ended up coming and she brought me to Faith Life Church. And, um, and I heard uh, Pastor Gary and Drenda talk and I-, I was so excited. I just remember crying and I just remember the Holy Spirit. Like, I wanna say it was just leaping in my belly because I was like, it was the truth. It's really important to be around people that believe that way. Um, to help you because the enemy's there and he wants to he wants to steal it from you what the word of god says is true there's no you know people they say well that doesn't really mean that well yeah it does that's what god said and, you know god he said we're healed god's not a man that he should lie it, the bible says so you got you have to take him at his word if god says that we're healed then we're healed and even if you don't feel like it you're still healed um i got it in 2007 i I got the word and was healed. He sent his word and healed me. I've been off all medications, injections, and I've been living free of MS. She's, she's not on any medication. She hasn't had no problem since. So to me, that's healed. Yeah, she's healed. She is healed. This, this was filmed in 11 years ago. And uh, she's been healed ever since. In fact, she started her businesses, um, uh, she's prospering and she's healthy, uh, been healthy. And uh, so I think they may need to change the definition of MS, right? Well, see, you're in the business of changing the definition of what the devil wants to do to people. You're the one going around doing good and healing all of those that have been oppressed by the devil. That's you. 
Now, so much of the church sit around passively when we need to be out on the aggressive side of this thing. And so we need, as the Church of Jesus Christ, to stand up. We hear about these things like New Albany here in this town had a 20 to 25% absentee rate due to flu. I mean, we need to step up as believers and go, wait a minute, not in my city, not in my house, not in my town, right? You know, we're not coming to church to, uh, as an appointment to, to come to an event. We're, you're the church. This isn't the church. And uh, we are on assignment. We have that anointing. We have that authority. And we need to exercise it, right? You agree with that? Great things happen when we step up to the plate and begin to do that. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.